Joey, who did you pick? Um, mine's uh, Bernard Foley. I think he, we, we need a big game from him uh, off the boot, uh, first and foremost. And I don't just mean goal kicking and, and kicking for penalty goals and conversions, but his tactical kicking around the field, finding grass, kicking long, um, changing up his kicking from contestables, um, putting uh, an... Uh, is he under a one-on-one -on -one situation with Raymond Rule or whoever else they put in their back three? It just the variation he brings in his kicking game as well as how he controls the game is going to be really crucial. This the week. handy thing there, he has not missed a kick at goal since he had that poor game against New Zealand in Dunedin. So the last two test matches, he's nailed every one. He'd, he'd trade one of those kicks for one of them. <laughs> he would. He would. Sure. He definitely trade all would. Of them. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, look, for me, it's Reese Hodge. Uh, I've just been so impressed with him. Since he came on the scene Super Rugby last year, I thought his transition out of Shoot Shield to the Rebels and then to the Wallabies was great. Look, for me, the spring tour last year, he really came of age and showed that he's got the ability to play at this top level. I would have liked to have seen him stayed in the centres, but as we've seen with so many superstars that have honed their trade, they start on the wing. You know, Sterling Mortlock for us, Tana Umanga played, what, close to 35, I think almost 40 tests on the wing for the All Blacks before he moved into the centres. So uh, that's the, the, the line I see Hodge going, and I think if he can really knuckle down and play well on the wing, that transition will come later in his career. So that's something to aspire to. So you've mentioned Sterling and Tana Umaga there. You think Reese Hodge can be as good as those two? I think he's got the potential. Yeah, that's it's a it, it, it's it's two big it's two of the greatest players to ever play the game yeah. probably to compare him to. But I, I think he's got the potential. He's got the speed, the skills, the size, and I think the ambition, um, physicality certainly. So, It'd be good uh, to get him into the centres because he's a big he's a big body and he's certainly got some pace there and he, he's got some great ball skills. But my, my right player to watch, you know, it's an obvious one. And each week I think he plays well. The ascendancy and the momentum he gives to the team is unbelievable. Uh, he should get plenty of opportunity in, in South Africa. Um, is he with the kicking and the fact the ball's going to sit in the air and go longer will give him more space to return the ball. And being fullback, you're the captain of defence, captain of attack. You get all the time in the world to see what's ahead of you and what options you've got. And he's in career best form. He really is. For me, though, that's the major point that Cano just made and which I think is the worst part of his, his game and it's his decision-making in counter-attack. I most think when he has too much time, that's when he makes poor decisions. He can be very indecisive at times. He doesn't trust his kicking game. So on the weekend, really, I think all of our counter-attack is going to hinge around the decisions he makes. And if he starts making poor ones, it's going to put a lot of pressure on him. He needs to be more instinctive, perhaps. Um, just an a illustration of how good a year he is having. So he's now equal with Lottie Dekiri for the most tries by a Wallaby in a calendar year. Yep. That's 10 by a Wallaby. And 17 is the world record. So that's Joe Rokofoko and Daisuke Ohata from Japan. So he needs another seven to equal that, eight to break it, eight tests still to go yeah. in 2017. So chances are he might break that world record. He's having a remarkable year.